France and the United States have always been firm allies. From the French aiding in the US's war for independence to the US coming in and helping France in both World Wars 1 and 2. Both countries have had a long and connected history, so it might be strange to hear that, of everything they've ever done for each other, the greatest gifts they ever gave each other were trains. <laughs> After the Second World War, much of Europe was left in ruin, especially France and Italy, which had been the site of many crucial battles. The US in the meantime was working on efforts to help Europe recover, with troops and workers staying to help rebuild, and with the US government piecing together the Marshall Plan to donate money to help kickstart business and industry. As the Marshall Plan was still taking time to finalize, in 1947, Washington journalist Drew Pearson pointed out that many people in Europe, and France especially were still hungry and suffering, trying to recover from the war. He proposed an idea in his daily column involving a train travelling across the states that people could donate food and supplies from their homes to that would then be shipped over to Europe to be given to those in need. The idea soon spread, and eventually Pearson and his wife Lovey found themselves organising the event. It was advertised as an in-person occasion for citizens to do something for those that have suffered. In his own words, to demonstrate the American way to bring democracy to life. The entire train was organised without any aid from the government, further showing the willingness of Americans to help Europe. It was scheduled to travel from California to New York, travelling straight through the middle of the country. Supplies from northern and southern states would be transported to stations and pickup points along the route, with many railroad companies across the states offering to pull these trains for free. Dubbed the Friendship Train, it started its journey in Los Angeles on the 7th of November 1947, with producers, celebrities and the press all giving it a spectacular send-off, further boosting publicity. Freight cars were filled with clothes, fuel, toys and more, with additional monetary donations being given to the people in need. The governor of Hawaii donated 72 tons of sugar on behalf of his citizens, and there were some instances of children stopping the train so they could donate boxes of milk and cookies. Farmers, factories, businesses of all sorts, but primarily Primarily, just average families donated what they could. Even states in the Midwest, famously bastions of isolationism at the time, and Texas joined in. By the time the original trains reached New York 11 days later on the 18th, they had 240 wagons of food and supplies in tow. The initial goal was to gather around 80 cars worth of food, but by the time all additional trains and donations had arrived, they totaled over 700 cars, with an approximate value of 40 million dollars. Several more ships had to be chartered to transport all the supplies, with the first one to be dispatched having been aptly renamed the Friend Ship. The ships arrived in La Havre, and the parcels were distributed all over Europe, with most supplies going to France and Italy where most of the fighting had taken place. Accompanying the parcels was a personal message from the American donors, reading, In this vast melting pot that is America, there are many different races and many religious faiths. In a spirit of democratic and Christian goodwill, we Americans have worked to bring these products from our fields to your homes. We hope they will help you until the day when your harvests will be abundant and beautiful again. The donation was gladly accepted and provided aid to millions of people across the continent, with France, who was in need of the most aid, expressing the most gratitude. In 1949, a railway worker and war veteran named André Picard came up with the idea to thank the US for its generosity by sending a gift train of their own. People liked the idea and it was put into motion. 49 box vans were selected, repainted, decorated with the heralds from each of France's provinces, and filled with gifts donated from French and Italian citizens. Unlike the Friendship train, the gifts that were donated here were more sentimental than practical. This train was known as the French Gratitude Train, or the Merci Train as it was affectionately dubbed, Merci being the French word for thanks. The gifts include children's dolls, fine china, tea sets, paintings from the Louvre, photographs, books, sculptures, wine, food, candles, cutlery, money, personal items like pipes, jewellery boxes, cigarette cases, furniture, and even several flags, including the flag that flew from the Eiffel Tower after Paris was liberated in 1944. Several vans contained fine silk wedding dresses and letters wishing good fortunes to any brides that would wear them. Some even included army uniforms, helmets, helmets, and medals, with one supposedly 
containing a Legion of Honor medal that belonged to Napoleon. Each gift van was also fitted with a plaque, marking which state each car was intended to be delivered to, with one for each of the 48 existing states and an additional one which was to be shared between Hawaii and Washington, D.C. The vans these gifts arrived in also held some significance, as they were what was known as 40 and 8s. They were built for use by the French army, and used through both world wars to transport troops and horses to the front lines, capable of carrying up to 40 men or 8 horses, hence the name. French, American, and other soldiers rode in them during the First World War, and they were used by occupying Nazis to transport troops, supplies, horses, prisoners of war, and civilians to concentration camps before being used to transport the US troops and supplies after the liberation of France during the Second War. Most veterans in the US recognized the significance of the vans, and as such preserved them as memorials. France, however, wasn't the only country to show their thanks for the friendship train. An Italian film company documented the arrival of the first shipment of food to be delivered in Italy on Christmas Day of 1947, and sent the film to America showing the people's appreciation. A few years later, the Italian government sent four large bronze sculptures to further show their gratitude to the US for helping them rid the country of Mussolini and helping them recover from the war. These are currently on display at the Arlington Memorial Bridge and the Theodore Roosevelt Bridge in Washington, D.C. 43 of the 49 Merci vans still exist today, preserved and on display at various parks and railroad museums across the country. The other six were tragically scrapped, burned, or are simply missing. The Wikipedia article on the Merci train details where in each state their respective Merci van is, so I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested in visiting them. Let us then look back at both the Friendship Train and the Mousy Train as not only shining examples of human generosity, but also proof that even the oldest of friendships can endure. And let it also be a reminder for us everyday folks that when you give kindness, you get kindness. Subscribe for more.